Let's do a Hyperion review. We're going to kind of interweave these Expanse and Hyperion reviews, kind of alternate through the weeks until I run out of Hyperions and just have to stare down the barrel of the Expanse. Just bam, bam, bam. But last week we discussed Leviathan Wakes, and this week we're going to do book one of the Hyperion Cantos, Hyperion. Now, in last week's review, I said that it was completely and utterly devoid of style. And I said that wasn't necessarily a negative. It could be a negative, but it wasn't necessarily a negative because style, as, uh, as much as having a style can just take your story to the next level, having a style can also kind of be a drawback. This is an example of uh, a book that definitely has style, definitely has a style. It's very um, inspired by poetry, so it is very poetic. The language that Dan Simmons chooses to use is very flowery at times. Just open Hyperion and read the very first paragraph and you're gonna go, oh, okay. Like, I mean, seriously, we can, we can do this right now. I ain't even playing. Bruise black clouds silhouetted a forest of giant gymnosperms while stratocumulus towered nine kilometers high in a violent sky. Lightning rippled along the horizon closer to the ship. Occasional vague reptilian shapes would blunder into the interdiction field, cry out, and then crash away through indigo mists. What the f***, dude? Anyway, uh, so that's what you're in for. The point is, uh, there's a style, and if you are into his style, you are probably going to love it. If you aren't, it's gonna be a drawback, or at the very least, it's gonna be something you're just gonna have to work your way through. I thought it was gonna detract from the story, or at least my investment and enjoyment of the story, and it, ooh, it came close, but it didn't really. But it made sense in the context of the fact that it was kind of based on poetry in a sense, or at least on a poet, old poet's works and kind of reimagining of some old styles. In the end, it felt appropriate. Then it is structured in kind of like a modern retelling of the Canterbury Tales. The book starts with them getting together. And then as the book goes along, they, they each tell their tale. And it's, it's really fun. This is a good book. I mean, this is an exceptionally really good book. This is a classic for a reason. There's a reason why people discuss Hyperion in one of the like sci-fi classics. There's a reason why this won the Hugo Award. It is good. It takes like a very classic like style of storytelling and reimagines it uh, and mixes the old and the classic and that really poetic flowery style of prose that you get with a modern sci-fi setting and it is smart. The world building is just next level. We'll talk about that in a second. So they all get their own little story and some of the stories are just phenomenal. Some of the stories I didn't like. That's okay. They're actually relatively small and compact and they're very, they're extremely different in the way that they're written, in the way that they're presented. Your first story is basically like, like straight up horror and you're like, well, this is freaky. I don't, I don't really like this. Um, well, I mean, I love it because I really like horror, but it caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting that. And then it moves into um, you know, you get your romance and you get your, like, there's like a detective story and there's, there's, there's the poet's story and, and, uh, the soldier, you know, some, but like I said, some of them I really thoroughly enjoyed and other ones I was like, can we get this over with please? And at the end of the day, I felt like it chose a framework to function within. Like the author sat down and said, you know what, this is going to be 
the framework of the book. It's going to be a journey, a pilgrimage, and it's going to be the framework. Now, at best it's framework, at worst it could feel like a gimmick. I don't feel like it was, but the way the story is structured and told, I can see how somebody could feel like it was a gimmick. But overall, the structure of this story is an absolute plus. It's a bonus, and it feels, they feel like they're actually being told in the voice of the character that's telling the story, and that I appreciate. That speaks of a certain level of skill from a writing perspective in order to be able to pull that off. Next on the list of just things that have to be discussed if you're going to discuss Hyperion is world building. There's a reason why when people discuss just next level world building in, say, a science fiction setting, they're going to bring up Foundation by Isaac Asimov. They're going to bring up Dune by Frank Herbert, and they're going to bring up Hyperion by Dan Simmons. And I'm sure there's more, but that's like the trifecta of like classic sci-fi world building. And he's not even that classic. This is like late 80s, early 90s. So it's not even that old. And it's already got its foothold in, you know, well, what are we talking about when we talk high concept, just next level world building, Foundation, Dune, Hyperion. That made its way into the lexicon quick. And there's a reason for that. It's that good. From the imagery that is presented to you that you can't help but see because it's so dramatic and dynamic and just well presented, you know, that you can't help but have images in your mind of the Shrike or the Sea of Grass or the Tesla trees or anything like that. From a sheer imagery perspective all the way over to the actual genuine world building of the governments and the systems and the logistics of how, you know, space travel would work between the ousters or the hegemony or the forecasters or the technicore or, and everything that goes into making all of these feel real and they feel logical. Like he, this man put some thought into this universe that he developed and he wanted to present to you. I can't express enough how good the world building was in this book. The characters are... So here's the thing. I didn't like them. I didn't like the characters in this book and I don't know if that's a pro or a con. Does that mean that he did bad with his characters or does that mean he did good at writing the characters? He just didn't necessarily want to make likable characters or did he try to make likable characters and other people like him and I'm just a weirdo and I thought these people suck and I don't like any of you uh there are that's not true there are a couple exceptions I did like Braun she was great um and I did like Father DeRay a lot although one of those two characters is in the book for like you know a chapter <laughs> but the characters weren't great like I said I don't know if the characters weren't, they were fine. They were good enough. They weren't, they weren't like over the top and they weren't bad. Like once again, we're going to go back to the expanse. Those characters kind of suck. Let's be honest, not good character work in the expanse. Um, this is definitely a step up from that. So I just personally didn't like them. So, you know, normally like a character or two or three or four that you latch onto and you're like, I like you. And then you get really upset if they're in danger because you're like, oh my God, you know, Joe Chip might die. Like, I, I can't, Joe can't die. He's my favorite, you know. Um, and that, I didn't have that in this, but I just didn't. Any one of them could have kicked the bucket pretty much at any time and I would have been like, eh. oh well. Also, so due to the fact that that these people are all on a pilgrimage to the time tombs where they're going to have to do something. They're not even sure what they're going to have to do. They just know that they've been basically called here. So when they kind of get to this end place, the book ends. So it's about the biggest cliffhanger that you'll ever have because they don't do anything here. Um, they, you know, because that's not what the book's about. The book is about the journey of getting there. What happens 
will come later. I don't recommend picking this book up unless you have enough time to pick the next book up. You're pretty much going to want to go straight through. And the end is... It's good. It was like, other than being a cliffhanger, it's good. It's, once again, the imagery could be as, as weird as the language was. The imagery could be great, and some of it could be just amazing. Like this, it, you can see this being the end of a, like, just a great epic movie. Just the way that the book ends. Them heading out, now that they're all united and their stories been told, and we're gonna go do our thing and what's happening above and below and around and just you get a feel and then it's just like and curtain and you're like oh no like where what's gotta you know it's but it was good i really can't say enough i really can't say enough about this book like i said there's a reason the world building um is hailed for what it is. There's a reason this won a Hugo. There is a reason that it, there, there's a reason for all of it and it is fantastic. I will give this one a solid, I'm gonna go all the way up to an 8.5. I was so pleased, so satisfied. I, I recommend anybody ever, period. Anyway, I just, I love this book. I really highly recommend this to absolutely everyone. And I'm not, not kidding. This was a very, 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 very good book. And it is a classic for a reason. 8.5.